let me give you the bad news right away. When I met with the great Nathan Cranzo to talk about his work in magic, we sat next to a very active set of train tracks, and there are moments in this video where the audio is rough. Here's the good news. Nate Cranzo is one of the most creative magic inventors in the world, and in this interview, he does not disappoint. <laughs> Well, I see and even still just jazz clubs here that are open like 24 hours. On your Instagram, it looks like you go to a lot of shows. Yeah, I love music. I'm a musician. I, I, that was like my thing before magic. Like I was in like a metal band when I was younger, and I was in a classic rock band for a while. Okay. And I, I was in like when I was a kid, I did everything like orchestra and concert band and wind ensemble, and marching band, all that stuff. Right. I think that um, live music is just so so much fun, especially if they're a really good artist. And, you know, a lot of these guys are. Even if they weren't, their music wasn't good, they're still great entertainers. It's kind of good to watch a good entertainer no matter what they do, you know? You can learn so much from them. Uh, I, okay, so I, let, me, let me start with this. I, in my whole life, have invented five tricks that I'm proud of. You know, five, yeah. in my whole life. I get the sense that's like a good afternoon for you. <laughs> <laughs> like well, no, no, when you said that, I'm like, I can kind of relate because <laughs> the ones that I just like really love and I'm like super proud of are probably just about the same handful, you know? Okay. A lot of times when I release something or create something, I don't know what the proper... Well, I guess there's two things. You can create something you don't have to... You don't have, you don't have to, to tell out, anybody right. about it, yeah. Exactly. But the, one of the reasons why I always tell everybody about it is because it allows me to let go of it, kind right. of, you know? If I feel like I, if I at least tell two people, then they can do something with it, maybe. Right. Uh, the best thing is when someone shows me something that I created and made it better, or, or made it cooler, or fooled me with it. You know, that's like, I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> that's what I wanted. I wanted to just like play with an idea and say, here, you guys just play with it now. Right. And I don't even really necessarily want the credit. I just want to let go of it. When I look at your work, I get the sense that it's rooted in a very classical approach to sleight of hand and magic. Like it's grounded in Tarbell, sort of like the old yeah, school yeah. books. Is that, am well, I Well, thank right you, that's that? good. Is that yeah, pretty much, you know, I think I just got lucky and I had like one of these dudes that had a huge library and he was like one of my mentors. Okay. And so I just, at a young age, I just instinctually knew, I was like, man, there's, there's some connection between him being such a badass and him having more books than I've seen anybody else ever had. That's, you know? that's it. I get the sense you read older books than most people, like when you're studying. Yeah, that's, prob that's probably true because I just want to know, I want to know it all. You know, I don't want to leave any stone unturned. And even if it's something like handkerchief magic or slate magic, you know, I just want to read it all because it might, you know, I could maybe translate that to an iPad and do it with an iPad or something. If you just, if you just know anything you can about the subject, um, uh, like if I'm trying to come up with a trick with shoelaces, you know, I'm just I'm gonna read everything I can about you know rope tricks and string tricks, you know. So th so then I just know everything that's been out there. Probably find a can. Still got some paint. And spray your name. So this is a place people can just come and spray paint. And yeah, yeah, and most of the time, um, it's like constantly changing. Like um, it's kind of like the rule of cool it's like if it's a really cool piece you kind of like don't touch it for a while you know yeah but if it's just like tagging art like that like this will probably be tagged pretty soon it looks like i am <laughs> i can do it again xander you got what you said all they're all out yeah oh, okay they just spray it oh it's working now when I first got into magic, I liked being able to trick people. Mm. And then I met like card guys, and I was like, wow, that guy like just did like a card move. I don't even know what he did, but I want to do that, you know? So then it was more about I want to do the move. And then like it, it clicked like years later, I was like, oh man, like the moves don't, nobody wants to see the moves. They're not supposed to see the moves. Like I got so wrapped up into seeing this move that no one's supposed to see, you know? So you go to magic conventions and everybody will be doing moves for each other. I'm like, you guys, you're not supposed to see that stuff, you know? Like, what, did you see what he just did? I'm like, yeah, you're not right. supposed to That's see terrible. it. That's terrible, right? Yeah. <laughs> go back but it's almost like you get credit for flashing in certain places, right. you know? So, so that like really, I got stuck in that mindset because I wanted to learn all the moves and it was more about the moves. And then one day it just hit me because it was one of those situations 
situations where some kid just like walked in with an invisible deck and like blew the room away and I was working working my butt off doing all these moves you know and I was like and it's and it's not to say that you shouldn't do moves because I learned so much from that I still use those moves but it taught me that if I can combine those moves with entertaining then doesn't that you can do no wrong I think literally like if you're an entertainer and you're funny and likable, not even funny, if you're just likable or interesting and you do magic, like that can slaughter any other art form, really. Just because it's magic, you know what I mean? We can do anything, you know? If someone can sing, that's awesome, but you probably know somebody on the block that sings. You probably don't know somebody on the block that levitates, you know what I mean? It's just, it's uncomparable, I think, if you really can marry the two well. It's just like nothing can touch magic. As a magician, like you, it's it's very easy to develop this certainty or this this. Like I know with my show now, I've been doing it for so long that I can walk into pretty much any room in the world and make people believe in magic. Yeah, right. Like, right, yeah. how do you keep that new? Um, and I think the only real answer I have for you is just the. Um, uh, just the love from the people, you know, because because I don't know how many times I'm sure you can relate. I've been getting dressed up to go to a show, and I'm just like, oh, fuck, I just don't want to do this. You know, it's not a bad gig. It's a great gig. The people are going to be great. You just it's just like any job. You just sometimes you just don't want to do it. You know, even though we were so lucky. You know, and then I get there, and like after the first trick, everybody laughs, or I see one person go, you know, I'm just like, oh, that's why. You know, that's why. I, okay, I remember now. That you know? 90 minutes redeems. You know the other oh, two yeah. and a half hours yeah. of the day that are spent preparing for that. There's so many times that, and I'm sure you can relate. That after a show, I just can't sleep, you know, because I'm just so, you know, wired from the energy of the people. Um, I mean, sometimes you get a standing ovation, and that just like kicks your ass. You're just like, wow, that was just like so much love. It just felt so good, you know. And sometimes it's just a quiet. Thank you so much. You know, we, we we've never had anything like this. You know, just somebody saying something. You know, it, it it comes in different ways. But then you're just like, wow, I can't believe I ever was like bitching or hesitating at all. You know, yeah. I can't believe. You know, this is clearly the greatest job. Before. Right, right, right. <laughs> it really can't compare to any other art form because it doesn't have the same feeling. You know, uh, you can you can do an, you can see an amazing play. You know, and you can see an amazing concert and. Lord knows I've seen some of those that have yeah. made, made me cry or made me yep. th feel like I had changed my life at this show, you know? Um, but I think magic can do that just as good if not better. Before driving on that night, I made my own contribution to the Lincoln Street Art Park. I used a line from the novel A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. It goes, Look at everything always as though you were seeing it either for the first or last time. Thus is your time on earth filled with glory. At least that's what I tried to write. Spray painting is really hard. 